Hello, I'm Sister Rosemary Greco, the Director of Wisdom House Retreat and Conference Center in Litchfield, Connecticut. We're here this week having a fine retreat on the theme of awe and wonder, the interface of science and spirituality. The retreat itself is based on a book of the same title, Awe Filled Wonder, by Barbara Fiond, who is a sister of Notre Dame de Namur. Barbara is with us this week speaking to this topic. She is an international retreat director, a, a teacher, an educator, and a person who has really spent much of her time working in the fields of holistic spirituality, prayer, the psychology and spirituality of human maturation, and this week a particular focus on the transformation of consciousness. So with that, we are happy to welcome to us, with us, Sister Barbara Fiond. Well, Barbara, your retreat this week has been more than thought-provoking. And one of the particular themes you've been talking about is the transformation of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit, how would you explain that, and how does it really impact our lives? Well, it, the transformation of consciousness is really um, a transformation of how we see ourselves in the world, and how we see the world, for that matter. And it has occurred to me over the last seven to eight years, maybe longer, actually, that um, there is a major crisis or turning point in our culture uh, and f folks really are not that aware of it and so I in my retreats which have many topics and which deal with many various uh, issues I always try to return to the issue of the transformation that needs to happen for people to be able to even understand what the suffering and what the crisis of our times are about so my theory basically, it's not unique to me, but my theory basically is that we are shifting from about 10,000 years of worldview, in a, of a particular kind of worldview, and we're shifting from that into something extremely new, something that in fact revolutionizes the way we are with one another. And um, I try in my retreats to bring, uh, to bring that to consciousness for people, to try to make them see that it's nothing bad, that there certainly are some sad aspects that are going to happen, such as dying, or dying of institutions, the collapse of certain ways of living, but that in fact this is necessary for us to be able to embrace this new vision. Now I think the new vision actually has basically most of it has come through the discoveries of science, particularly quantum physics and biology. And um, not that the scientists are necessarily that aware of the fact that their discoveries are also um, uh, going to change the way people see themselves in the world. They're very often concerned with the nature of reality as such. But um, I try to identify what scientists find uh, not in, and explain it not so much in terms of um, their equations and how they figured it out, but the end product of their insights, so that um, uh, and then uh, apply the end product to how we can understand ourselves in relationship in the side of in the light of these insights, how we can understand ourselves in relationship to each other and to God. Um, what I am finding is that many of the insights of science today will fundamentally shift um, our understanding of many of the dogmas and doctrines of the faith. Not that we get rid of them, but that we certainly rethink them and re-understand them within the context of today, which is in the context of this new vision. Uh, an example would be that certainly in the scientific community more and more um, people are beginning to understand that we are really fundamentally interconnected. And um, the, the worldview of the last 10,000 years has, in, in, has emphasized our differences and our separation. We identify and define ourselves in terms of how we are different from other people. I believe that in the coming in the emerging worldview that is, uh, that is upon us and is still blossoming forth, we are going to find our identity in terms of our at one -ment, in terms of how, what we have in common. Uh, this is new even for religion. Uh, certainly uh, many of uh, the contemporary religions identify themselves in terms of how they are different 
And even in dialogue, in, in uh, dialogue between the various major religions, very often the dialogue is in terms of trying to convince the other that we are right. And so the emphasis today in terms of our interconnectedness and uh, both in thought and in fact in the nature of reality that um, nothing happens in the universe that doesn't affect everything everywhere, for example, that kind of interconnectedness, but also in the world of thought, um, I try to show folks that the, the insights of science help us to come together rather than to keep us apart. You know, when you're speaking about the oneness, it um, reminds me of some of the things you've said during your retreat. You, you were talking about dualism, um, how much we've been growing up with the, the importance of dualism, good and evil, right and wrong, and that um, dualisms are not helpful, but there are dualities. Could, yeah. could you say well, a little something? Actually, there are, of course, obvious dualities in the world, as you just mentioned, up and down, right and wrong, night and day, male and female. But dualisms, which have existed basically in, in various forms, have existed, I would say, for the last 10,000 years. Dualisms um, take dualities and absolutize one of them over against the other. So when we have male and female, uh, that's of course obvious for, our, for certainly for women today, uh, the emphasis in the past has been the superiority of the masculine over the feminine, rather than saying, yes, there are profound differences and also great similarities between the masculine and the feminine, but one is not necessarily better than the other. Maybe one can say certainly there are some gifts that may be more, um, uh, that men might be more comfortable with than women, uh, but there may be some women who in fact have exactly the same comfort level so that we don't um, identify in terms of they are better and this is worse, but in terms of diversity and honoring both, uh, vive la différence as the French mm -hmm. say. Yeah. And can we also say that some of these dualisms, dualities rather, exist in each of us? Oh, I, we, we all have this, the energies of the opposite within us. And I think that's another thing that, is, that we're beginning to become aware of. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. yeah. Well, let me uh, try to have one more question here because you spoke about nothing is permanent except change. Mm -hmm. And not all of us like to keep having change, and yet that seems to be the one thing that keeps happening. What has this got to do with the transformation of consciousness and the acceptance well, of change? Mm -hmm. Well, pretty well everything. <laughs> because I think what we do want, and this culture certainly stresses the fact that we want things forever. We, in our religion, in our religion particularly, there's been an enormous amount of emphasis on the forever, the indel indelible marks of the priesthood and of baptism, the permanent vows among religious, marriage forever. And what we're finding out that in fact, it, it doesn't always work that way. And so science has, uh, is telling us that there is in fact a constant change. That doesn't mean necessarily everything has to end, but what it could also mean that every aspect of reality needs, um, uh, needs a deepening, needs a, a depth realizations which bring about change. Uh, at the other hand, we may also have to realize that certain things come to an end and that the end might be better than the perpetuation of something which is no longer viable and no longer good. And rather than seeing it all as evil, try and understand how one can um, develop meaning in the constant changing process that the universe seems to be offering us as reality. Yeah. Well, Barbara, I want to thank you for really sparking our minds and uh, encouraging us to keep being imaginative as we uh, develop a, a new consciousness and move into the future. Thank you. I thank Barbara Fian for being with us here at Wisdom House. And if any of you are interested in more about Barbara, she does have a website, which is barbarafiand.com. And if you're interested in other programs that we pr present here at Wisdom House, we invite you to come and visit our, own, our website, which is wisdomhouse.org, or give us a call at 860-567-3163. Wisdom House is an interfaith retreat and conference center presenting programs in spirituality, education, and the arts. Thank you.